Good morning and welcome, Patriot Radio News Hour. I'm Joe Jaquin, CEO of the Patriot Trading Group, and our toll-free number 800 592 The website at allamericangold.com, and welcome to Friday. Yeah, oh, man, Christmas is going to be here next week. Right? Next Friday is Christmas Eve, so we'll, we'll we will be closed. Next Friday, so you've got today, uh, and then uh, Monday through Thursday of next week. If you want to call and place orders or, or sell products, uh, matter of in the last few days, uh, bought a lot of product. We got some great items today because of it too. So uh, some things that we've sold in the past, some things we don't sell a lot of. We got a lot of great uh, stuff that's come in the door, uh, both in Phoenix and Colorado. As well, let's face it. Things are expensive, uh, you know. We we and I get it. You know, everything out there uh, getting uh, more and more expensive. I got bad news for you. It's only going to get worse uh, before it gets better. Uh, so we will be closed next Friday. Uh, we're working on metals plans. Uh, Brittany's going to start shipping those after uh, after Christmas. So th- those will be going out. Uh, you pick up people in Phoenix and Colorado. We may be calling you uh, to pick those products up uh, a little er- earlier than that. Maybe, maybe not. I, I can't guarantee it. But whatever uh, Brittany's plan is, uh, we'll, we will be very, very timely uh, with our medals plans as always. And uh, what, a, what a really interesting day. Uh, we got follow through here on gold right now. Uh, gold's up seven, eight bucks here. Uh, 1805 silver. Uh, silver's kind of unchanged here, but $22.50. Uh, the Dow is down uh, over 300 points. Uh, you know, Joey was, let, yesterday I got home from work and. I, just, I I didn't know where where Joey was. I asked his brother. I'm like, hey, where, where's where's Joey? I, I don't know where he is. So I, I thought he was out with his friends or maybe he was working out. Uh, he was locked in the office uh, rebalancing portfolios and taking care of clients. And he comes out. He finally emerges. And uh, I was like, what, what are you doing? I was working. He goes, it's quadruple witching day tomorrow, Dad. You got to get ready. It's going to be a downdraft in the market. Uh, Joey, good morning. Uh, and and uh, I, I love what you're doing, man. Yeah, I know. Good morning. And uh, yeah, it was a busy day in the office. It was uh, rebalancing some stocks and some portfolios for some clients. And uh, we got them all situated, let them know what was going on in the market. And uh, yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, so one of these weird things uh, the 10 year note continuing to fall. Uh, you, you got dollar weakness, and, and again, I think a lot of it is uh, because deep down inside, they don't want to admit it, but deep down inside, they know Jay Powell's full of crap. They know that they've backed themselves into a corner. Uh, they know that they've got big problems. Uh, when you look at, I know, you, you know, and Jason will tell you, listen, it was uh, gold, I think, for the year, and it's not over yet. So gold may end up flat for the year or right near it. Silver's probably going to be down for the year. But, Jason, actual demand, we're talking demand that was up 20 30 40%. Yeah, I, I've been uh, selling with Patriot Trading Group uh, since 2018, so 18, 19, 20, 21, four years. And uh, the amount of silver in my vault this year has been far less than the other three years. It's just not as readily available. It's not as easy to obtain and sell. I mean, if you want want it, you can get it, you know, pay more. But uh, we try to make sure our customers are protected from overpricing. But, yeah, way less, Joe. It's just just harder to get. Yeah, and you think about all the what all the other central banks are doing, all the gold purchases that that are happening. Uh, We don't even know... Uh, what China is doing? We know the numbers, uh, the demand numbers in China of what you know, because China—they're the largest gold producer in the world. They don't export any of it. They're the largest gold importer in the world. So, uh, and that's saying something because you got India, who's a major gold buyer. They actually don't produce hardly any gold at all in India. So all of India's gold's got to get imported and, and China outdoes them. Uh, but both of those countries, 
uh, import numbers were up big, uh, especially uh, in India. More to do with tax implications. India passed a, a tax law that last year, the year before, everyone loaded up. Uh, now they've run out of that. Now they got to just bring it all back in. Uh, but 2022 is setting up for a very interesting year. When we get back, we've talked about the FDIC. They don't have the money. Something else may be brewing. You don't. Not, you're not going to want to miss it. 800-951-0592, Patriot Radio News Hour. Uh, we got uh, myself, Jason Walker, our partner in Colorado, uh, Joey. Uh, is uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, my oldest son. Well, I think everyone knows. They all know you, whether you know it or not. I've been talking right. about you forever. Uh, he is. He works for Northwestern Mutual, getting ready to uh, graduate on time. Yes, on time, on time, on time. Uh, with a finance degree, uh, already uh, already working. Uh, he had. Uh, uh, his pick, if you will, of where he wanted to go, and and I uh, something that uh, I really love because he did he did the research, the homework, asked my opinion for whatever that was worth, uh, and I think uh, he's at the uh, the best place out there if you're looking to put some money to work outside of gold and silver. Have that gold and silver first. But I've been telling you, and we know that. Listen, this isn't new, right? Be careful about what you have in the bank. And, and, and again, nobody here is saying, hey, don't have a bank account. That's crazy. you got to have it. What's crazy is leaving you know, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars in the bank. Especially, you know, it's one thing if you were believing the Fed for the last, you know, say, 19 years when they were telling us there was no inflation. Remember, they rigged all the numbers. Right, so they can understate inflation. Then, oh no, we want to have two percent. If, if we can only have two percent, we can't get to two percent. I want two percent. Of course, now it's ten. Right? Maybe if you believe that nonsense, then then having that money in there, and I get it for a lot of people, they don't know what to do. They don't have someone to trust. You do now, right? Give Joey a call, uh, and he can help you with it. But we've been talking about the FDIC. So the government created. Now remember, uh, it, here's another thing too. You know, and Jason, I'm sure you get this up there. Some some people actually don't want to believe that when you deposit the money in the bank that you don't own it anymore. Some people don't <laughs> want to believe that. You know, it's. I, it, I mean, I don't. It, ahead, it, it's interesting, Joe, because uh, e even though the, the new laws make it even more so. If somebody else is holding it in any capacity at any time, what, what is that? What is that old saying? Uh, uh, possession is nine tenths of the law, or whatever. You know, right? It's always right. been that way. It's always been that way. I don't know why people even think it's ever been that way ever. If somebody else is holding it, 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 it it's not really yours. Right. Right. Exactly. That's why. Like, oh, uh, my, my financial planner told me if I can, I buy the gold T ETF. That's good enough. No, paper gold isn't owning gold. That's. A very, very different thing altogether. Uh, owning binding stocks isn't owning gold. Uh, but, but would you, just so you know, because and I, I get this all, you know, at least two or three times a year now. It used to be more when we, when I first started telling people on the air, uh, and uh, we, we first started running the commercials. They're like, oh, well, show me the law in Congress where that happened, and I'm like, well, I got news for everybody. Believe it or not, banks existed before America existed. I know that's a shocker. Okay, I, I, I get it. This has been banking law since it was either the uh, the late fourteen or early fifteen hundreds. It actually involved a case in England. If if uh, if you want to know, uh, there there was a case there about uh, a person who had died, and the the bank essentially saying, hey, we own the money. And an heir, a, a, a family member emerged that said, hey, wait a minute, I should be able to take his money and there was a big court battle. And, and, that, and that's how this thing uh, became into law. You don't own the money. Now, there are 
other laws in place that will tell you, oh, well, the banks, you know, they're, they're going to provide you access to your money uh, when you request it and all this and that. And, of course, uh, we found out with Greece right up until they say you don't have access, right? So just, j just remember that. Uh, go in there and ask them for cash. I love, you know, I told the, the story last week. Uh, now granted, uh, one of our, you know, said, hey, I want a hundred thousand dollars in cash. We're like, yeah, that's gonna be, you know, weeks, maybe a month before we can come up with that. Even going in and asking for ten grand. I mean, it, it, it they don't have it. Uh, and, and again, uh, the FDIC was created right uh, in, after they shut the banks to try to give people confidence to put their money in the bank. It started at a thousand dollars, by the way. That was the original FDIC insurance. And they, what they do is they charge the banks a little fee every month, so they got to pay a fee on their deposits, and those fees go into the FDIC and. Uh, they're supposed to be there when a bank goes under. They use that money. Uh, used to be so. Like, oh, go back to oh six, oh seven, oh eight. Be when the banks collapsed. Uh, the FDIC had like forty billion dollars in it, which obviously wasn't going to be enough to pay for anybody. Uh, so they uh, they bailed out the banks. They upped it to two fifty. They also upped. The fee. So right now, and I said this the other day, right now, uh, the FDIC has a record amount of money in it, $120 billion. But there's a big battle going on because some people are starting to wake up to the fact of, wait a minute, there's how much money? $120 billion? I mean, that sounds like a lot until you realize that just, you know, J.P. Morgan alone has over $2 trillion, almost $3 trillion worth of assets. Uh, four banks, uh, I think it was uh, uh, Wells, like uh, J.P. Morgan, Wells, Bank of America, Citigroup. Just those four banks have like $9 trillion. So you can see they really don't have the money. Uh, but there's a battle right now happening inside the FDIC. Uh, this is uh, Wall Street on parade, the Martins. And, and what has happened is uh, there's a guy, uh, Rohit Chopra. Yeah, and, I, and I apologize if I'm butchering the name. All of these people, by the way, the FDIC people, they don't get elected. We don't vote for them. They are all nominated by the president. So, uh, as an example, the person in charge of the FDIC, Jelena McWilliams, she was appointed by President Trump. Obviously, uh, this guy, Chopra, has been appointed by President Biden. And just so you know who this guy is, he's the head of the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, okay, and I think this is one of the uh, agencies that was created in Dodd Frank that's supposed to be looking out for us, okay, and and I I say that facetiously because they could give a crap about us, but here's what's happening: there's a battle at the in, inside of the board of the FDIC because here's what they're worried about: is oh wait a minute. These banks really are way too big. And the problem now is even the small banks, you know, we used the example yesterday, the Bank of Schmuckatelli, if they go under, hey, we got the $120 billion, we got you covered. Even the small banks now are so big that just to bail one of them out would use up the vast majority of the FDIC's balance sheet. Just to put it in perspective, if you go back, you know, you know, 20 years ago, you know, and this is something that, that really uh, I've been highlighting for over and over and over and over again, the number of federally, federally insured banks 
So if you go back 20 years ago, the number of federally, federal, ugh, tough day, it's Friday, federally <laughs> insured banks was over 10,000 banks. Over 10,000. You go back to when Ronald Reagan was president, there was 18,000 banks. And banks back then could only be regional. I'll give you an example, I, uh, and I'm sure you listeners in Colorado or wherever you are, you'll have the same thing, same type of examples. Because banks love their names on stadiums, right? They love it. They love to have their names on stadiums. The baseball stadium here, when the Diamondbacks first became a franchise, uh, it was called Bank One Ballpark. Well, before Bank One, the biggest bank in Arizona, and a lot of you will remember this, Valley National Bank. Valley National Bank, it was a regional bank. Banks could only be regional. Banks could only be so big. If you moved from, you know, let, let's just say you moved from Ohio, and you move to Colorado, or you move to Arizona. Your bank didn't exist here. You would have to, hey, I'm going to have to find a new bank here and get open a bank account and do all that stuff. Of course, now you move, you don't have to. There's, you know, all the, the ten biggest banks are in every state and every city and, and every part of the country. There used to be laws against that. One of the biggest reasons for that law was in case one of these banks was reckless and had issues and went under, it wouldn't take down the entire financial system and we could actually give people their insurance money if their bank went under. Joe, and, uh, got... Joe when, when uh, Andrew Jackson took down the second bank of the United States, their central bank, he took all the federal deposits from that central bank and he dispersed it amongst state banks all across the country to keep it solid to keep them solid right there was a lot of wisdom in that well of course the bankers with the help of alan greenspan lobbied congress to get them to change the laws so we went from eighteen thousand banks when reagan was president down to about 10,000 banks in the late 90s. Well, a little over 10,000 banks in the late 90s. Of course, that's when, once again, they lobbied again. Allowed and got the laws changed. You remember, a lot of you are going to remember NAFTA and GATT. Right? The quote-unquote free trade agreements uh, that we all do, uh, we all know now, well, man, was that not free? Right? I mean, think about it. We have almost a trillion dollars of wealth a year leaving the United States, thanks to that great piece of legislation. But one of the other things it did was allow these banks to go global. Right? They wanted to sell credit cards to the Chinese, plain and simple. Today, we've got less than 5,000 banks. So think about in 20 years, We've lost over half of the banks. And now uh, the FDIC, the board, is conflicted. You know, think about it, right? Obviously, they probably should have been conflicted 20 years ago. But they're like, wait a minute. The way this is happening, the pace that this is happening, where all of these banks merge and merge and merge and merge and merge, essentially the banks are going to get so big that the FDIC is going to be absolutely worthless. Because even, think about it, they're, they're worried that even the small banks now will be too big for them to bail out. And this is one of these things where uh, when, when you're talking about where, where you have your money, the bank, is unfor unfortunately, is probably one of the most dangerous places. You know, you think about what I just said, J.P. Morgan, B of A, Wells and City, over $9 trillion of assets. They said the entire banking system has about $22 trillion. So I don't think 
the $120 billion is going to cut it. Patriot Radio News Hour. We'll be back after the break. Yes, ma'am. 800-951-0592. Patriot Radio News Hour. And just kind of peeling back the layers uh, that is our banking system. And, and what's amazing in all of this is the the agencies that were created to quote unquote protect us are the agencies that have allowed for all of this to happen none of this happened uh, without the central bank blessing on all of this right think about uh, how nice it would be to say hey you know what uh, there's 18, 20,000 banks, uh, the, the, the biggest bank, uh, the biggest bank could go under and not pose any financial risk uh, to the entire financial system. Uh, we could uh, provi- actually provide the quote-unquote insurance uh, that we say is available to you. Uh, and it's really almost laughable when you think about $120 billion and how small of an amount that it really, really is. I mean, that, that $120 billion uh, probably runs the government. I don't even know. The, what, what, what is the uh, the government now runs, what, like $6 trillion uh, a budget annually? You know, do the math. $120 billion uh, wouldn't even get you a month of government service, more or less uh, any attempt to bail out now almost any bank, Jason. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I don't know, Joe, if you've seen those videos when they could you talk about how many few banks there are now, how, how less there is every year, there's less banks. I've actually watched the videos of the actual people in the banks when they get appropriated because your bank is done. And uh, instead of just closing it down, which some of them do just close down, the new bank just shows up. It's like an overnight thing. They don't tell anybody anything. It just it just happens. Yep. And it's all, it, all of a sudden, yeah. The the marquee and the sign on the bank. All of a sudden, uh, there's a banner yep. that covers it up. And here's your new bank's name today, right? And don't worry, everything's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to see here. No, it's a good thing. This, now, look this at functions it. just like your old bank. Your old bank and this bank. Yeah. It's the same thing. Well, then why have with all the different why well, why with all these guys with the big rich suits coming in here to to, to advise the, the workers of all the changes? Why the banners and the changes? Of, you know, if, if it's if it's so great, then why is why with all of this this craziness over a one day period? It's, it's those are crazy videos, Joe. And it, and it's something where listen, it's all about they need to be bigger to actually compete, and, and this is the the, the problem uh, if. Right now, in, in, in the banking game, they're so entrenched into this house of cards uh, that they've got to be big enough to be able to have any type of influence in the marketplace. And all that really does is it makes it more risky for us. I wish it didn't. Right, Joey, right there? They're trying to tell us, hey, daughter, this is going to make you safer because we're bigger, right? We need to, and I get it, I get the urge, right? We're too big to fail now, right? So they've they've got to help us out. Right, you know, the too big to fail thing is just, uh, it's just a domino effect. Once one goes down, they kind of all go down with it. So that's why it's, you know, J.P. Morgan, if that falls, that's... Uh, yeah, the whole the whole thing. Yeah, J.P. Morgan, the rest of them, and of course, when you're sitting there and you're looking at at uh, what to do, this is why. I'm, again, I'm just warning. I don't like where we're at right now, and what I mean by that. Listen, we know we're in another bubble. We get it. I'm not dumb. You guys listening aren't dumb, right? The last time we had a problem. Right? Well, what what was the deficit in 08 now? What, six or seven trillion dollars? Right? Right? We get the Fed's balance sheet was seven hundred billion dollars. And they had a blow or bigger bubble. So look at what look at what Joe Biden signed yesterday. Hey, we're gonna add another two and a half trillion dollars to the deficit, and we're hoping 
If we do some emergency measures at the end of next year, we can get to maybe January of 2023. Maybe, hopefully. That would put the federal budget deficit of what, uh, $32 trillion. Uh, the Fed's balance sheet's $9 trillion. So we've taken a problem that was a 7 or $8 trillion problem. And now it's a 40 some trillion dollar problem. You look at the assets within the bank, right? What was the problem? The problem was the underlying assets weren't worth it, right? Housing prices crashed, everything crashed. They're, they had all of these loans, they have all these dark pools, and I won't even get into all the things they do uh, to, to these loans and packages and whatnot. The problem was that nobody was paying their bills. It wasn't really nobody. We're talking about a small percentage. People don't even get this. You know when the housing crash? I mean, it seemed like every other person lost their home. But the realities were, it was about 10%. Not even, that's overstating it. It really isn't that much that you need. But when it comes crashing down, the second there's trouble inside the banking industry. See, it used to be, when you had 18,000 banks, well, it was just these small little banks and, you know, no place Montana that, that was having problems and they'd go under, and but it'd be okay. Remember when housing was regional? Right? Hey, just because housing's in a slump in New York doesn't mean there's a problem in Phoenix. Isn't it funny how that's no longer true? That the banks are no longer regional, and now all of a sudden, seemingly, none of the property markets are regional, Jason? Yeah, I I don't think this is uh, an accident, or, or, or uh, we're trying to we're trying to keep together some some uh, logical system to help you the uh, you the American citizen. This is this is uh, this is. This, this was projected. This was planned. Uh, you know, Rockefeller said it plainly and many times: uh, competition is a sin. And well, why should you have four thousand or three thousand banks? Let's get it down to a hundred banks. We'll have our Fed, our Fed coin digital dollar. You know, that, that that's where we're headed. Competition is a sin, Joe. We don't need a, we don't need four thousand banks. Get rid of that. I, I, I'm going to tell you right now. That's absolutely one thousand percent of where I'm at right now. There's no doubt in my mind. After the next crisis, which I think we're in the middle of, we're this bubble. It, we, I, I still think, and I could be wrong. I still think there's a little more air left to be blown into the bubble. We're not, we're not quite there yet, but it's close enough. When it's over with, we will have a digital currency controlled by the Fed, and maybe a hundred banks. That's it. Patriot Radio News Hour. We'll be back right after the break. Welcome back. Patriot Radio News Hour. Joe and Jason. We got Joey here in studio. Joey, if people want to get a hold of you, give, give out your number real quick. And just know this. I know because it's hard. A lot of people don't have the time to write it down. Uh, we've got Joey's number at the Patriot office. Jason's got it up there in Colorado as well. But go ahead and give him your number. You gotta turn the mic on. He's new. He's new. He's just I'm new. I'm a rookie. I'm a rookie. Uh, but yeah, my number is six zero two nine zero nine nine zero four eight. Again, six zero two nine zero nine nine zero four eight. And if you it, uh, if you've got uh, some money that you want to put to work with him, uh, give him a call because again, uh, the bank's probably the. I, I, that's crazy for me to say. Uh, the least. The the least. I guess the least safe place. It should be the safest place, but uh, you know you got to remember these banks are so interwoven into this house of cards. Uh, they're really the biggest part of the bubble here. Speaking of the bubble, the Dow uh, down almost 500 points now uh, as the losses are accelerating. Uh, the S and P is down 37. Uh, the Nasdaq, which had a horrible day yesterday. Uh, only down about 30 points. Uh, they were down, I think, over 300 points uh, yesterday. Uh, gold, uh, the only thing up today are gold and silver. Uh, gold's up uh, eight, almost nine bucks here, 1805, 1806. 
uh, silver, uh, $22.50 to the ounce. I do have uh, some items available today that uh, some are new, some are old. On the gold side, listen, the gold market is getting really tight. Uh, major price increases today uh, on on fractional gold, uh, the fives and the tens. Uh, I've got twenty dollar gold pieces, and 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 I don't have a ton of them. We don't have one hundred and fifty of them. We don't have a hundred of them, uh, but we've got fifty or sixty twenty dollar gold pieces at two thousand ninety five, and you're like, wow, man, that's fifty dollars more than a couple of days ago. Well, gold, gold's up almost sixty bucks uh, from the lows on Wednesday, uh, and and it looks like here up back above eighteen hundred. Uh, this is this eighteen hundred. It's more of a, a psychological number, but still very very important. I'm going to give you another number. You know, like how I like to do it, a close over eighteen twenty, and I think we're going right back. Remember, we were threatening 1900. I think we're going to be back there uh, fairly, fairly quickly if we take out uh, if we take out 1820 silver. What was it? A few days ago, we had a couple of cases of silver eagles, and silver was 2150. May have even been 2140 or 2130. Uh, we, and we ran them at six ninety, and that was that was the cheapest price going all the way back to January. Now gold or silver is up over a dollar since that point, but yesterday, just dumb luck, just dumb luck had you know when you're we've been around. This is one of the great things about Patriot. We've been around. For a quarter century, we've been around 25 years. Matter of fact, 2023 will start year 26 in business. I had a couple of cases of Silver Eagles come in the door, and they're nice, back dates, but fresh, uh, really fresh looking. Yesterday, remember they were 710 yesterday because silver was up a buck yesterday. Uh, back at 690, so we've got 50 rolls of U.S. Silver Eagles at 690. We got about fifty twenty dollar gold pieces at two thousand ninety five, and then I had some interesting coins walk in the door yesterday as well. Uh, Jason sold some of them on his program, but I had graded Morgan dollars come in yesterday, and they were Mint State sixty three to Mint State sixty six. I have one. Mint State 66. All of these, by the way, are pre-1921s. So keep that in mind because we, as we know, and when it, in Morgan dollars, the pre-21s are worth quite a bit more than the than the 1921s. I have one MS 66 Morgan dollar one. I've got it on sale for 250 bucks. Just so you know. If I was to buy this today, it'd be two seventy. I can sell this today to my wholesaler for two hundred and fifty bucks. So you're talking about you're going to be buying that under cost, twenty dollars under cost. You're going to be buying it what my what my wholesalers would pay for this coin. Uh, I've got one MS sixty six Morgan. By the way, all of these are PCGS and NGC. Every one of them. I've got 27 Mint State 65 Morgans. They're $180. My cost is 200 bucks, So that's $20 below cost. And then I've got a dozen Mint State 64s. Uh, and those are uh, at $90 on the Mint State 64 Morgan dollars, uh, and that's $10 below cost. So all the Morgans are below cost. Uh, we've got Silver Eagles at six ninety, and then, of course, the $20 gold Jason at 2095 All good options, and uh, I'll, I'll say this, Joe. Uh, 
18 months ago to today. I mean, we, we've looked at silver and gold prices. They've been sluggish this year. But I, I tell a lot of the the people that come in, you know, if, if you're going to save money, if you, you know, I, I, I look at gold as savings, you know, and in in May of 2020, you had silver at uh, 1480. In, in June 15th of 2020, it was 1710 for silver. So over over that time span, you look at just even just a year, a year and a half ago, it, it goes up and it continues to go up and it's ready to explode in 2022. So get on the phones, 800 9510592. Get this stuff while it's cheap, and this is a moment where it's cheap. 800 9510592. Patriot Radio News, our final segment here uh, before we head out for the week. By the way, the Mint State 66 Morgan dollar is gone. Uh, so we've got uh, some Mint State 64. Uh, uh, I'll get it out. I'm struggling today. Uh, all the Morgans that we have left are all below cost, every single one of them. I've got some Mint State 64 Morgans, PCGS, NGC grade, $90. I've got Mint State 65 Morgans. I've got about 20 of those left at $180. Again, those are all below cost. We've got rolls of U.S. Silver Eagles at $690. So think about it, silver's up well over a dollar an ounce. Uh, and we got the price back down to $690. i have only got two cases. They just walked in the door yesterday. Uh, again, one of the advantages of being in business as long as we have, uh, we have these things happen. And then I've got $20 gold uh, at $2,095. I will just let everybody know on Monday, look for price increases on five and ten dollar gold pieces, as uh, uh, Jason, they they just vanished. <laughs> That's right. You know, we we sell the the, the old the pre thirty three gold. It's what we specialize in, and and uh, I love the fact that uh, uh, we, we we can offer these coins on a daily basis. I mean, there's a lot of other gold and silver dealers. They can't get their hands on these as as, as easily as we can, and get you the the price that we can get you. So. Uh, man, I, uh, it's it's what I buy, Joe. I, I, I when I, before I joined Patriot Trading, I did a little bit old, I did a little bit of the newer stuff, and uh, I I am completely sold on the old gold. You guys got to just scoop this stuff up while it's while it's at these sagging. I mean, I, I give you those silver prices from just over a year ago, Joe. I mean, look at it. Silver was fourteen to seventeen last year. You got to remember, year over year, this you know this thing is still moving up. Yeah, and again, I think twenty twenty one a year consolidation. A really a year that they we, listen everybody wanted to believe right this is the this is why I said this is kind of the end of the bubble right because we wanted to believe it and and of course the the amount of money spent and all of that stuff uh, you know so uh, gold and silver made huge moves huge moves in 2020 consolidated the, this this year uh, I think unfortunately I think we're 2020 2020 2022, 2023, uh, we're going to see huge moves again uh, as the Fed narrative uh, continues to unravel. Uh, 800-951-0592. If you guys want to get a hold of Joey, Joey, give, give, give your number out. Yeah, my number is 602-909-9048. And I know it's the holidays and whatnot. Just shoot me a text, quick, fo- quick phone call. Uh, pencil something down for after the holidays. If we need to reschedule, we'll reschedule. It's no problem. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's a good point. I guess it's holidays. For, don't feel like if you call Joey, hey, I got to, he's going to tie you up. Get it on the books. He'll, he'll, he'll get to you after the holidays and, and get you get you set up and get you ready to go here. Uh, again, we got Morgan Dollars, Mint State 64 Morgan Dollars at 90, Mint State 65s at 180. Uh, I know phone lines are, we still got two lines open, uh, but get in while you can. Rolls of Silver Eagle 69. It's like a smorgasbord here. Got a little bit of everything here. $20 gold, uh, 2095. The Dow is down. 495 points. The S&P is down 42. The NASDAQ is down 50. Uh, gold's up a 10 spot, 1807. Uh, silver at $22.50.